Welcome to this advanced shell scripting video titled Make Version, a shell script to create sequentially numbered versions of a file. Now the purpose of this script is just that. It is to create sequentially numbered copies or versions of a file. The script can create up to 10,000 versions of a single file. It creates versions of a file by appending a number to the end of the file name being versioned. The latest version having the lowest number following the file name and the oldest version having the highest number following the file name. So before I continue describing the Make Version Shell script, first I'll tell you where to download it. You'll want to go to mtxia.com, that's mtxia.com, and you'll see a page that looks like this, and go to Downloads, and click on Scripts, and once you're at Scripts, go to Corn. And if you scroll down in that page, you'll see a link to make version, MK version. If you click on that, you'll see the source code to the script in that page. So you can copy and paste the source code to the make version shell script from this page and save it in a file on your local system. And you'll want to give the make version shell script read and execute permissions on your local system. So you'll probably do a Chamod 755 on whatever file name you choose to save that script in. So this is an easy script to use and in this video I will show an example of using this script to make multiple versions of a file called example.txt. So I have a directory here that has a couple of files in it. It has the example.txt file and it has the shell script make version underscore k93. This is a corn shell 93 version of make version. We'll look at the code there. So there is the code in that file. And now let's look at the contents of example.txt. And you'll see that is just a, a straight text file, just simple text. So let's run the make version script to create a version of the example.txt file. So we'll run make version. Now that we ran that, let's look at the file system listing again, and we see that we have a new file out here now. We have example.txt.0. So let's compare those two files. Let's compare example.txt to example.txt.0. And we saw no uh, it didn't tell us there were any differences, and we have an exit code of zero, so those are the same file. So now then, or there's no differences between those two files. So now then, let's edit example.txt and add something to it. Just add that, and now then let's compare it again. Well, now we see a difference, because we just added that line, and our exit code is non-zero. So now then let's make another version of that file. Let's run our make version command again, and we'll run it again on example.txt. That is our original file, that, or that is our uh, that is our working copy of the file, and so we're going to run make version on that file. And so now we see we have yet another copy in our directory. We have .0 and .1 now. So let's 
let's think about what happened there. What happened was that uh, when we ran the make version command again, the .0 file was copied to a new file called .1. So now .1 is the oldest or our original file. And then example.txt was copied to example.txt.0. And so example.txt.0 is the version where we uh, made, our, made our edit. And so example.txt now should match this file because that's what we that's what we just uh, made a version of. It's what we made a new version of. So if we do a compare now of example.txt to example.txt.0, those should be the same. And if we did compare .0 to .1, well that should be different because .1 is now the oldest or our original file name. So now let's edit example.txt again and add some more text. So we added some more text. We'll save that. And let's I'll clear the page, do an ls, ls minus l, and let's do one more iteration of our make version. And on again example.txt. And now we see we have yet another copy of the file. So what happened is that text.1 was copied to dot two, zero was copied to one, and then example.txt was copied to dot zero. And so now then example text dot two is now the now contains the text from the original file. And so that's the original version or the oldest version of the file. And you can also see the pattern of what the script is doing. It's just copying the oldest version that's creating new copies of each file as it, as it moves along. So it starts at the oldest version and moves it to the next highest sequential number and then goes through each version uh, in the oldest order copying one to the other. Now I'll clear the page again and let's run several iterations and try to push the sequential number over 10 and see what happens. So let's do the make version again. We'll do it 10 times. Let's see what we've got now. Okay. So now we've got 12 versions, actually 13 versions of the file out here now. And we see that the ls command is not necessarily displaying those in numerical order, is it? And that's because the ls command displays files in ASCII text order, not numerical order. So now then let's just prove that the numbered files that we have out here contain the correct version. So let's look at the highest numbered files. Those should be the oldest files, or the oldest files that we've been working with. So this one is the highest numbered file. That one should contain our original text, right? So let's look at that. All right, so that looks like our original text. Now then, the next number, 11, that should contain that first edit. That should be our first edit that we made. So let's look at that. And we see here, here's our edit, that first edit we made. Now then the next file, number 10, should be that second edit we made. So let's look at that. And then there's that second edit we made. So we can see that it, even though that ls, is not displaying them in the correct order, it is keeping track of them in the correct order 
and renumber them, renumbering them and keeping the versions in order. So it is doing the versioning correctly even though the ls command is not showing them in the correct numerical order. So that is it on make version shell script. It's a very simple shell script, uh, very easy to use. And that is the end of this video. Thank you for listening and watching.